hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my first book review for the month of July. I'm very excited about this book. If you guys saw way back at the very beginning of the year when I did my most anticipated books of 2021, this was on it. Um, I pre-ordered it. It showed up a day late, which devastated me, but that's fine. But I got Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Riley Sager fan. Um, Home Before Dark was one of my favorite reads last year, as was um, The Last Time I Lied. The Last Time I Lied, I still think is my favorite thing that um, Riley Sager has ever written. It blew me away. Um, but this book was, again, just a gem to read. For those of you who don't know, Riley Sager is actually a pen name. Um, I'm actually not sure what Riley Sager's real name is, but he uses it to write his kind of macabre thrillers. And he got um, very prominent several years ago when he released um, Final Girls. So Survive the Night came out on June 29th, 2021 and it is a romp down nostalgia lane. I will read the back for you guys very quickly and then dive into my review. So it says, it's November 1991, Nirvana's in the tape deck, George H.W. Bush is in the White House, and movie-obsessed college student Charlie Jordan is in a car with a man who might be a serial killer. Josh Baxter, the man behind the wheel, is a virtual stranger to Charlie. They met at the campus ride board, each looking to share the long drive home to Ohio. Both have good reasons for wanting to get away. For Charlie, it's guilt and grief over the shocking murder of her best friend, who became the third victim of the man known as the campus killer. For Josh, it's to help care for his sick father, or so he says. The longer she sits in the passenger seat, the more Charlie notices there's something suspicious about Josh. From the holes in the story about his father to how, from how he doesn't want her to see inside the trunk. As they travel on an empty, twisty highway in the dead of night, an increasingly anxious Charlie begins to think she's sharing a car with the campus killer. Is Josh truly dangerous? Or is Charlie's jittery mistrust merely a figment of her movie-fueled imagination? One thing is certain, Charlie has nowhere to run and no way to call for help. Trapped in a terrifying game of cat and mouse, played on pitch-black roads and in neon light parking lots, Charlie knows the only way to win is to survive the night. Okay. So this, this book is really, really fun. Um, um, I have to say the number one appeal to this novel is like the 90s nostalgia. Uh, Riley Sager uses a lot of music in this book to really nail the setting, to nail like the kind of um, ambiance you would have in like an early 90s road trip, which I really, really appreciated. Nirvana is very prominent. Um, and if you have a love of old films, I feel like you'll really enjoy this book as well. Our main character, Charlie, is, um, what is it, a cinephile, right? She's huge into film and just talks and makes movie references throughout the entire movie. A lot of Hitchcock. There's definitely a little bit of like a tribute to kind of like the film noir aspect in this book. And if you are a fan of true crime, this book actually might make you want to pull your hair out. <laughs> um, the brilliance of this book is the fact that we have to have our main character get into the car with this potential serial killer, um, which means she makes a lot of really, really stupid decisions. And this that was the one part of this novel that really kind of took me out of the story as I was reading it. There are so, so many decisions that Charlie makes that I am just like, why are you doing that? That is so dumb. You don't need to do that. You shouldn't be doing that. Let's not do that. <laughs> um, like just red flags everywhere that she's constantly ignoring. And that was pretty much the biggest problem that this book had. But if she was a smart or if she was more of an intelligent, more aware um, protagonist, we wouldn't get the story that we have. Um, that being said, I do think it is a very fun story. It's very classic Riley Sager, very twisty and turny. You're never quite sure who to trust, what's going on, what's real, what's not. Um, I will say this is the first time I've read a Riley Sager book and I was able to figure out what was going to happen. Um, I will say there, there's two big twists in this novel. Um, and the first twist I figured out immediately. The second twist I suspected, I wasn't 100% sure of, and the way it's revealed is 
actually phenomenal. It's one of my favorite parts of this book. Um, but it, I did really, really enjoy it. I read it in about two days. Um, and I think it's very interesting because it really does pull on a lot of moments that we see from true crime. You know, there's very much some, some Ted Bundy-esque-ness to this serial killer at large on the campus. Um, but it's, it's more focusing again on our main character, Charlie, as she's trying to discover if she is riding with Josh and whether he is a serial killer or not. Um, and Josh is, Josh is a shady, shady dude. We can't, <laughs> we cannot excuse Josh's behavior. He is a shady, shady dude. Um, and I really like the storytelling and how everything unravels and unfolds. And it, it's very, very fun. Um, the writing is super easy. It's very on the edge of your seat. I would sit and read like 70 pages of this book and be like, oh my God, how did I get through this that quickly? Like, I just didn't really want to put it down. Um, and that's something that I haven't experienced this much with Riley Sager before. Of course, I love um, Last Time I Lied and I love Home Before Dark. Both of those books, I didn't feel the need to finish immediately. Like I really wanted to just read, digest what was happening, try and figure everything out, really like piece it together. I didn't feel the need to read it in a day the way that I did with Survive the Night. I just like, I think I put it down to go to sleep and to go to work and that was it. I needed to know what was going on in this book and I really needed to know if my predictions were right. And I think that was definitely the allure of this is unlike the other Riley Sager books where the twists make perfect sense but they seemingly come out of nowhere, you have all of the information to figure out what's happening from the very, very beginning. And I actually really, really liked that because he did break his formula of throwing you a huge curveball. Again, still Riley Sager, so there's still going to be the twists and then the twist is within the twists. But this was done differently. It, it was it was solvable, but I liked that all of the clues were there. I didn't feel like totally blindsided. I didn't feel like, oh my god, like that makes sense in retrospect, but I never saw that coming. I liked that I almost felt like the detective on this case trying to figure out what was going on, and I was able to kind of pull the strings together and figure it out. Um, I think this this book does an interesting thing. It takes one seemingly very unlikable character and kind of puts them on this pedestal where certain characters really like them and certain characters really hate them and those motivations are what really push and drive this plot and I thought that was a very very interesting way um, and what the, the character I'm speaking about is one of the previous victims of this story and the fact that this character never has a voice throughout the entire novel but we only learn about them through the memories of others was really really fascinating. It's a really great way to show how one person comes off to a bunch of other people and I just thought it was a really cool unique way to showcase a character who isn't present but is very 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 pivotal to the plot and I thought that was a really cool character device that Riley Sager used throughout the entire novel and told it through the eyes of many, many characters without it feeling forced to really give you a perspective on what was happening. Um, I will say I don't feel cheated by the ending either. It definitely wasn't, and it was all a dream, or did it maybe happen? Um, because I did actually think it was going that way at one point. Um, our main character, and you find this very, very, very early on, so this isn't really a spoiler, um, has, I guess it's some type of PTSD like coping mechanism where she has these almost like hallucinations and as they were going through the story I was like oh no this whole thing is going to be like she was hallucinating everything and all of this is fake and pretend and that's going to be the twist and then we're going to find something else and that just wasn't the case so if you're reading this novel and you get to that and you're like please tell me this isn't all a dream it's not all a dream um but it does allow for both the reader and for Sager to kind of add this like questionability of like certain things are they happening are they not but not in a you're not going to get the answers you want at the end and I thought that was very very cool not quite sure if the psychology behind um, Charlie's mental condition is 
scientifically accurate or if that's real. I've never heard of anything like this. When, if you read the book, you'll understand why I'm confused about it. Um, but it was very, very cool and I liked it and I liked the triggers that he used for it. I thought that was really, really brilliant. And I was just, I was blown away. And it's interesting because the entire book takes place over the course of one night, a vast majority of it taking place just in a car. And again, I was at the edge of my seat the entire time and just really wanted to just know what was going on. And that's a very um, impressive thing to me to keep a reader's attention when you have just one or two characters isolated in one spot. Um, and I thought that was done very, very, very well. So yes, this was a four star read for me. Um, again, it had some some questionable moments. It was a little predictable for me, but I didn't want to put it down. I absolutely adored it. And I highly recommend if you are a fan of Riley Sager, checking this one out because I think it's unique. I think it's fun. And if you're a crime, and if you're a fan of true crime, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. You can definitely see where he was inspired from and what um, what he pulled from to make this book work. I love that it's set in the 90s because this novel would not work in modern times. There's a lot of things that are, are very pivotal to the plot that wouldn't matter today. Um, things like pay phones, um, and Uber not existing, needing carpool services. Like, There's a lot of things that are very, very crucial to this novel that really, really work in the 90s setting. And I really liked the 90s setting. It did feel very, very very 90s. I feel like sometimes you read books that are set in different time periods and they don't quite nail it and then you get books like um, Grady Hendrix's Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires which nails the 90s. You get My Best Friend's Exorcism which really puts you in the 80s. So I really like when something dark and macabre can really take a like classic beloved nostalgic time period and just make that also a star of the show. So yes, super super pleased with this. Definite, definite a recommendation to anybody who is interested in true crime, thriller, uneasy reads. Um, not super scary, definitely a little, a little gory, but very very fun, very fast paced, and super happy I got to read it. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. It helps me out so much, and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah. Bye.